everybody to the ninth ask me anything session hosted by samayu and food and you today's session is titled from carnivore to creator the plant based shift with our esteemed speaker ms madhuja de before we begin i want to give a short introduction about samayu and food and you so samayu is an ngo which is registered in new delhi and we are a movement of people and organizations who care about the interconnectedness of animals people and our planet working together to create a just fair world for all with 65 officially signed on ngo partners institutions individual experts practitioners philanthropists activists and concerned citizens our samayu community growing is growing and is working collectively on foregrounding the interest of animals and nature in their respective areas of environment climate change public health social justice animal exploitation and more all against the backdrop of animal agriculture food and you is our consumer outreach campaign and food and you 2.0 is motivating people to become a better version of themselves a 2.0 version of themselves by reforming their diets the goal is to shift to a plant based diet for creating food systems that are sustainable in addition to being ethical practical and rational such food systems benefit human health animals and our planet we have reached 3.6 million individuals through our online and offline initiatives across 30 locations in india and we have done 130 events in six languages and received 40000 pledges to go dairy free in the last year alone we also go beyond dietary changes for consumers we actively engage at policy level to drive transformation in our food system our focus also involves advocating for changes in the country's nutritional guidelines in collaboration with public and private institutions I would like to give a warm welcome to Madhuja to uh, to meet Madhuja Dey who is the passionate founder of Vegan World uh, on a transformative journey from a food loving non-vegan to a pioneering advocate for ethical living through her personal experiences and dedication Madhuja has not only embraced the plant based world but also strives to make cruelty free products accessible to all fostering a more compassionate and sustainable world join us at, as madhuja shares her inspiring story and insights into creating positive change in the realm of animal welfare and environmental consciousness a warm welcome to madhuja i would like uh, Mad, uh, madhuja to give a short introduction about herself before we delve with our begin with our questions thank you so much namrata thank you it was really warm and i mean Uh, what a sweet introduction and i was very delighted to know that i mean samar is doing so much i know i have been a part of you and uh, i think you guys are doing a great job reaching out to the institutions which are very very important at this junction of the movement and reaching out especially to the you know young learners who are going to be out in the market very soon and then being in food industry so you know, you guys are doing a great job congratulations on that um hi everybody hi uh, hello audience out there uh, my name is madhuja madhuja de and i am from kolkata i am the founder of vegan world and founder partner of vegan daily uh my journey of uh, vegan uh, my vegan journey has been a transitional journey where of course i was not born vegan and you know by my name a lot of you can understand i am a bengali born in uh, bengal growing up in a bengali household obviously i have grown up eating a lot of regular food that includes animal products a lot um however uh, you know uh, my life got changed after my first uh, dog happened to me uh, after i rescued my first dog but there are a lot of instances Uh, attached to it that of course uh, added to this change and this journey and this new beginning so we will talk about it today uh, yes and then it's been 5 years that i have been vegan i live a compassionate lifestyle i live a 360 degree vegan lifestyle and uh, my profession is also to do with you know plant based and vegan uh, products um, in in kolkata that's uh, more or less uh, a very short introduction about me before we start talking more about this journey absolutely 
Madhuja, can you just give us a glimpse into the you know moments that ignited your shift from a carnivore meat lover to a plant-based lifestyle? Like what gave you that inspiration? See, um, you know, uh, it happens to a lot of people. I know that uh, there is just one ignition and the life changes overnight. But it wasn't the case for me. Okay, uh, for me, as I said, uh, I mean the whole compassion for a non-human being only started after i rescued my first dog okay i never grew up with a puppy or a dog or a cat uh, as a family we never had a pet and i never knew this whole uh, emotional bonding with animals so that that part of the world was totally dark to me I didn't understand how people would bond up with them and all of that. But then uh, my first dog came into my life and I started to realize there is a bond which doesn't have a language to speak, but it is unconditional. And once that started, what happened is it started spreading because love is infectious, right? And once uh, you start building that bond with somebody then it started be going beyond your four walls of the house i started liking or feeding you know stray dogs or cats and then it slowly went to i started feeding cows and uh, you know so i was like okay in one hand i'm feeding cows on the other hand i am also indulging into animal meat uh, as I said, you know, it didn't happen for me in one day. It happened over instances, various, various instances. So, for example, summertime, you know, uh, I became like one of those animal rescuers, uh, say, six years back, seven years back. I was one of those animal rescuers. So I would be there for, for any animal in help. I would place water bowls for birds during summers. And then there was this question that was brought to me, aren't chicken bird? I mean, on one hand, I'm keeping bird. I'm, I'm, I'm not only keeping, but I'm also preaching. I'm also putting up in social media, keep bowl of water for birds, for dogs, for strays, for cows. On the other hand, I am going and, you know, buying or, you know, paying for uh, killing those birds i mean if not those but they are also birds right so there are a series of instances like this that happened one after the other which constantly kept asking me question that how am i justifying my love for food and love for animals because i used to always say i am a foodie i love food i love to explore on food and i love animals and for me animals obviously meant dogs and cats to the max some stray cows okay um there was this temple i remember where i wanted to go and i saw there were these two little kids baby goats were being dragged in front of me for sacrifice and i didn't enter the temple but that was one big instance where i felt I wanted to rescue those animals. At the same time, I was also questioning myself. I'm eating muttons. Where are they coming from? So every day, you know, after my life started uh, being, uh, you know, involved with animals, every day I was questioning myself, what am I doing and how am I justifying my actions? And then slowly I started, I wouldn't say slowly, I would say parallelly, I started reading a lot about what is happening in animal industry. Because uh, I remember I used to do, uh, I still do, I still uh, do a lot of social media posting about saving animals. But now it's on a broader aspect. That time it was more about dogs, cats, and sometimes I would write about you know, the practice of uh, sacrifice in religious festivals. 
and that's when a lot of people would ask me question where are your meat coming on your plate from like how are they landing on your plate do you think and i was constantly so i would also behave like any other uh, you know regular person today who would jump into defending about various points and defending how my food is important and doesn't matter where it comes from and all those things very typical uh, questions and answers that we face every day i would do the same thing however i really really thank god that i always had this thing that even though i would defend myself on the other hand i would go back and do the research that what is happening why are these people really talking about it what is wrong in their industry and i have learned so much through articles through documentaries i started following activists first i started following activists who talks about what is going behind the wall of the slaughterhouse how is this whole you know business being generated and etc so it was a period of i think good 5 to 6 months where i was in that complete turmoil of learning unlearning relearning and coming to a decision that really i want to do because today saying vegan or talking about vegan community so easy that time i didn't know a single person vegan around me dur dur tak i didn't know somebody who would be vegan and i would take an advice everybody i knew was on the screen a community around you which we get it yes. now yes 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 and you know everything was on screen following activists who were overseas seeing videos okay of people seeing videos of overseas india whatever but you know, don't have any link with them i don't know how to start the journey but i was very sure that i want to do something about it i am not going to be um you know at peace with this whole thing happening because if i'm looking for justice for dogs and cats i want the same for all animals all animals absolutely yes and 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 that's 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 eventually how i transited and i also was very clear that uh, i definitely don't want to make it a overnight uh, uh incident because i wanted to make it slow and steady and make it forever so i transited from my previous uh food habit person to a plant based or a vegan person and this whole transition there are a lot of you know steps that i have taken which has also help me to not only transit myself but also my whole household my complete uh, kitchen setup my you know ma- ma- family members initially obviously they were all eating outside but at home creating that environment or those food uh, criteria and the you know supplies to make it complete and proportionate so that's why i chose to transit and uh, what would you say have been some of your you know initial challenges when you started uh, aside from obviously lack of uh, the feeling of community because uh, like you mentioned in the beginning people were were not really aware that this is a movement which is happening and there were many of us who are struggling at the same time but we did not really have access to each other you know <laughs> to discuss obviously <laughs> so what would you say what were some of the initial challenges see i think the first challenge is the whole whole infrastructure that's the first challenge i mean i open my fridge i will see there's except for some vegetables there's nothing else available for me mm. if i op- open my kitchen um, grocery cupboard i will see all the things that are there most of it is non edible the 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 family the pure i mean the family was obviously super worried when i it was like a bomb when i said i'm going to not eat my first thing to give up was red meat and uh, dairy that was my first thing to give up so i transited like red meat dairy and then it was uh, poultry and then it was fish mm-hmm. so it was a period of 8 months and i just uh, so it was more of 
reducing dairy and the red meat was immediate like i don't have to so obviously the first i said is the infrastructure where i was living second is the family everybody is like what are you going to eat so you know you see everybody around you all of a sudden being worried about you what are you going to eat how are you going to survive you will fall sick i mean even if the topic is not that but that becomes the highlight of everything mm -hmm. everybody's focus is like what you are going to eat all the seers i mean everybody was not really asking but all of a sudden everybody said what are you going to eat and uh, availability of products because see i was not a, i was not coming from a vegetarian family right i was coming from a non vegetarian family where uh, every i mean you know in our family food is an element of living uh, be it festivals be it celebration be it weekends be it people coming it is always celebrated with food so everything has a different signature food to celebrate with now everybody is like i mean how are you going to be like you know doing it and when you don't have alternatives for example like that time i didn't have cheese i didn't have dahi and um, even suppose for example if it is holi I, how would you make dahi vada and dahi vada is so uh, signature dish of our uh, oh, you know, on your instagram uh, as well <laughs> yeah <laughs> on our uh, holy celebration yes. so uh, so i think yes these are the two thing uh, three things uh, infrastructure the whole uh, pure and the society family and the uh, availability of alternatives so what happened is um, when i saw that uh, okay while i was obviously learning about veganism i was also learning about the alternatives that are available around the globe but most of the time it was not available in kolkata yes. <laughs> and i was like okay oh, why is it not available in kolkata then how will i have to now i will have to work around it to you know prepare it from scratch so if i have to say i have to make a cheese sandwich you, say that, to... you know this was your motivation for you to start vegan world and you know was this yes. one of the yes factors. absolutely this was this this and also food being the element of uh, food has always been uh, my element of uh, living and you know do because i started hotel management and my reason to study hotel management was because i was always fond of food i wanted to do something to do with food and you know so i chose that okay i will study also uh, pursue my career in something where i have to study also around this subject which is so favorite to my heart so uh, obviously when i became vegan i realized that or i would say when i chose to walk on this path i realized that food is something that we are consuming three times minimum three times a day right i mean you are not buying a leather bag three times a day you are not uh, probably wearing i mean a silk saree three times a day but food is something that is the most uh, creating the effect on this environment or animal cruelty or whatever you talk about so if i can do something in this particular line i i can motivate people through food by bringing alternative to them Absolutely. then a lot can change and it really happened i mean once it started being available you know once you start seeing things you will tend to pick up if you are a you know curious person a person to try something new forget veganism you will be like एक बार खा के देखते हैं प्लान बेसन आगे कैसे होता है यू नो ये चीज तो होता ही है कि कोलेस्ट्रॉल फ्री अरे ये प्लान दही क्या होता है एक बार चलो खा के देखते हैं सो यू नो दैट वन बाई ऑफ योर वीगन दही वर्सेस दी काउ मिल्क दही डस क्रिएट वाइन चेंज राइट आई मीन एटलीस्ट वन दही वॉज नॉट बॉल वन प्लान बेस्ड प्रोडक्ट वॉज चोजन ओवर अ एनिमल बेस्ड प्रोडक्ट सो ये a uh, non non availability of uh, alternative was a very big motivation for me because i had to literally chun chun ke get my alternatives i used to call my friends who would travel from abroad carry some butter for me carry some this for me honey for me vegan honey you know like uh, uh, there is some rice something syrup and all of that so yes uh, this is a major factor and uh, this this is a plus and a minus point <laughs> for my journey <laughs>
you know, uh, can you just address some of the very common misconceptions you see when you talk about this plant-based li lifestyle, very simple misconceptions among the people and how would you address them? I hear 10,000 misconceptions, but I will tell you, because see, when you give somebody a reason, I mean, see, whenever you give somebody a topic which is unknown to them or unusual to them, or raise a question to their morale or their regular practices, it is a human habit to bring out more and more negative comments towards it. That's how, you know, we all do. But among 10,000 uh, excuses or the misconceptions, I will bring out only three, okay? One is protein, protein, protein. I mean, that's one of the biggest misconception that everybody has around the globe and i don't know why i'll come to this second is the uh food chain the food chain will be disrupted if we not eat uh animals because um this animal is that animal, that animal is that animal, that animal is that animal. That animal is not a part of the wild food. Yes. Yes. You are manipulating it. Yes. And I think another uh, concern, concern that comes to me a lot is what will happen to so many people who are working in these industries, you know, the slaughterhouse industry, the dairy industry, all this, you know, this transportation industry. So the first, the first myth about protein, I always say, your protein eats vegan. Like your protein is what? Chicken, hen, what hen eats? Hen eats on maize and corns. If hen is getting all her and his required protein and nutrition from maize and corns and grass, and grains why do you have to kill that hen and eat it i mean for this many years we never got worried about protein our monks and rishi and muni they all were vegetarians all their life there are india has been known as a vegetarian country all our lives nobody worried about protein i mean we all knew that milk didn't have so much of protein right it was more of a calcium calcium hyped up product so all of a sudden protein became so hyped up every food product has protein in it naturally every food every food it's big and it's it's uh, larger and smaller quantity and that's exactly why we need to balance our greens fruits grains legumes and i mean the most ancient of the proteins are plant-based proteins sattu i mean roasted uh bengal gram powder that's one of the most popular, cheapest known protein to, I think, this land. I mean, especially in Bengal and Bihar. I mean, you see how much of sattu is consumed, right? But all of a sudden, we have forgotten about this uh, amazing food. And we all are running behind protein from egg and chicken. And then all the dals, masoor dal, right? All dals, chickpeas, they are all so, uh, you know, concentrated in protein. There are so many vegetables, spinach. I, I, uh, all of these years, we have been eating these products. It's just that somebody and an and outside the foreign uh, media, I, I wouldn't say media, I mean foreign um, background has told us that we need protein. And for protein, we need to particularly have this product. So we are all running behind it. We all were having adequate protein. We haven't heard of anybody dying of deficiency of protein, right? And that's one of the least known uh, disease probably anybody would have heard. So that's one. Second is the food side, uh, the food chain. I mean, we all need to understand that the day human have learned to do agriculture, we have all moved out of that natural food chain that we keep referring to, keep referring to, which probably existed in, you know, pre-agriculture, uh, the green revolution and the agriculture time. The moment we learn to 
grow our crops we all know that we have started doing a lot of things differently and by agriculture i'm talking about the crops and the animals that we are currently eating as our meat consumption our de uh, not de dairy i'm not talking about right now but the egg consumption they are not a part of this food cycle these animals are separately grown and bred and then slaughtered to be food so that's why there is a different count of wildlife and farmed life so remember farmed life are not a part of our food chain they are not a part of the natural biodiversity that you think you are referring to this farmed lives are completely artificial they are an additional count on this planet they are an additional count yeah, which are on our planet yes they are additional count which count is forcefully brought into this planet and then they are fed additionally for which there are extra pressure on agriculture to feed these uh, mouth and then eventually they will be cut into pieces to feed just certain percentage of human population not 100% of human population so this whole process is not a part of the food chain that you refer to your class 5 science book it doesn't work that way anymore we have all moved away a lot from that diagram that we keep referring to in all our arguments so we really need to learn more about that part and the third point is the job what is going to happen to all these people who are working in this animal industry um i don't know uh, you know it's very important that we start um, i have seen a lot of interviews of people who work in slaughterhouse who work in poultry farms who work in dairy farms i know a lot of vegans who have who come from these backgrounds and they have turned vegan you know because they've seen the cruelty so close in their life that they went uh, mentally and stable and veganism brought stability to their life choosing a peaceful lifestyle to uh, made them stable so it is not easy to work in a slaughterhouse it is not easy to work in a dairy farm you literally have to lock your emotion your heart your feelings you have to put the hide the key somewhere and forget about it if you have to take up a job here it is not a happy industry it is not a sunshine industry where you would like to work to that's why i don't think many people uh, really wish to kind of draw their uh, you know uh, aim in life or uh, career goal to be working here however just even if that is a concern just think about the year 2000 when computers were coming into india we all thought people are going to lose job there will be so much of unemployment because computers are going to take over all the work that human beings are doing that we are doing on pen and paper registers and files and records but that didn't happen right in fact it opened more forum for people more forum for studies more forum for youngsters so i mean by stopping an industry to grow i don't think uh, that's nobody is going to lose a uh, job it's just that people are going to get more opportunities and more opportunities will be created i mean see simple there are so many brands now in india there are so many companies uh, now in india who are working on plant based movement vegan movement activism products manufacturing distribution my own business i mean we are growing we are employing people right so people are finding job in plant based industry
So that is never a point to worry. Keeping uh, this factor in mind, what role would you say, uh, you know, what role do you believe technology and innovation will play in promoting and sustaining a plant-based lifestyle? See, you know, technology wise, I mean, I'll be very honest about this particular question. Like technology, social media, all of that is great. I mean, that's that that, that will definitely push this moment, push the movement, uh, give it a greater momentum of push. But for an individual, you know, to be in this and continue with this lifestyle and completely believe in it trend and um, social media and you know alternatives are not the only option the first thing is to understand and believe in it because unless you have the deeper knowledge about it why you are doing it how it is benefiting you just because your friend is doing you are doing tomorrow your friend will stop you will stop you are getting a product you are liking it tomorrow you will get bored of that product you will give up on it that's not going to work what needs to be worked is self understanding and that's exactly why i mean you know when you said that uh, food and you is doing so many programs and you know spreading the word putting it into the mind of growing youngsters teenagers children also people because after one age sometimes we kind of close ourselves from learning we are like we have lived it so if we are fine we don't know if we are fine or not but since we have lived certain years of life so we are very comfortable to live it that way we don't want to change so it's very important to i think uh, you know understand why we are doing it how it is benefiting me my children my future my family because the, if if we always think about our children we always think about our next gen because we know that one day we will go they will be living we definitely don't want our next gen to roam around with a oxygen cylinder on their back right we definitely don't want them to live on only medicines and supplements all their life we want them to eat food we want them to live like how we lived our childhood uh and you know eating playing being active going out not wearing a mask and sitting inside the home and in front of a phone and a pc all the time so technology is great i mean technology is going to bring more uh, addition to this uh, industry uh, make things cheaper because at a mass level i think uh, cheaper products are very important the main thing people start uh, comparing it is with the mrp they don't care what is in it but it's all about mrp and the offers so yes those are important but to hold to get a grip on it it is important for every individual to understand that what we are putting in our body why we are putting in our body why we are having this pills why pop pills why can't we do an alternative to you know give better immunity to the body things like that is very important like going old school absolutely uh, you know moving for, uh, looking forward any upcoming uh, trends or you know advancements you are seeing in this sector which is making you excited about this movement you know gearing up yeah i mean whenever i see this uh, um, you know see i tell you i mean india was never a meat eating country right we were known to be a vegetarian country but all of a sudden we have become a very meat eating country like we have see our rating has gone much below i mean in terms of vegetarianism even in a vegetarian household new generation kids and youngsters are not stopped from having meat outside or uh, occasionally or for health reason i mean nobody knows what is the health reason that they are going to have betterment in terms of having meat or egg but because everybody is having so protein is found in egg only so that's why they'll have egg so you know there is lot of this foreign pressure from outside how 
the whole eating pattern has changed in our country and so i think to break this chain technology is important because i mean plant based alternatives equivalent plant based alternatives are important i mean pepperoni pizza pepperoni pizza aaj se 10 saal pehle matlab tha bhi nahi itna popular abhi to jaise bachche pepperoni pizza chhod ke kuch khana hi nahi chahte hai they call of us in pepper but even the kids don't know what pepperoni is it's it's a trending thing pepperoni pizza so having a plan with pepperoni pizza to cut this you know trend is equally important to to kind of fight this uh, trend so i if i have to offer a kid i would be like have plan with pepperoni pizza equally good so yes technology does play a role and because you know uh, a lot of people will say oh plant based uh, pepperoni is technology based and animal based is not no both the pe- pepperonis are factory made both the pepperonis are technology based i mean if you didn't know for people l- let me tell you i mean pepperoni and ham and all of these things in a factory are made from very very inferior quality of animal products and they are put into a lot of ingredients and uh, temperatures and process to make it look so beautiful in front of you it is not that way <laughs> so yeah i mean that i think technology plays a big role here you know uh, sabko cheese chahiye so abhi cheese ke liye to technology chahiye i mean otherwise i would be very happy if you are happy with having greens fruits we can make a lot of things out of it but if if you have to kind of compare apple to apple then we need technology to bring that apple plant based to to be plant based apple is plant based but just you know out of uh, fun i just mentioned this so yeah uh, that's why technology is very important in this whole industry and uh, finally what would you see uh, what would you say has been the most rewarding part of your journey from starting as a carnivore and shifting to a creator you know how, what would you say is your most rewarding part of this journey plan based journey see uh, namrita you know uh, when i was a new vegan at that time uh, five years four four and a half five years back i think so i became vegan and you know the reality kind of hit me and i could see everything around me was red everything is so much cruelty so i has to fight with everything everybody i would argue i would try to give my piece of advice everywhere everywhere i would get exhausted but with time you know we mature in this journey and we slowly realize that this is what i can do so i think the there is i have the control on my life right and the way i have changed transited has motivated a lot of people my whole family is vegan now you know everybody in my family is vegan a lot of people around me my friends my known people they have seen me they got motivated they have all kind of uh, believed in this three things that i keep saying is uh, you know uh, it's reduce uh, uh, replace and repeat so you reduce eating meat or the animal product replace it with equivalent tasty and nutritious uh, product or uh, veggie or whatever and repeat it so keep con- continue doing this and one day you will reach to that goal so i've realized that i am the most important thing in this journey i have to keep myself fueled up all the time so i would say that the most rewarding part is i go to bed very peacefully knowing that i have not hurt consciously anybody today this is a very big thing that comes to me i tell this to a lot of people the peace the peace that you get the guilt free uh happiness this feeling nobody can take away from you or you or anybody and also my, 
I have, you know, given up on my corporate career and I started my business, Vegan World. Obviously, it was a lot of challenge. There were a lot of, uh, you know, many things that came up and gone. But I was very clear. So I can say that, you know, professionally also, I earn money without a guilt. I, I'm into a profession where I can peacefully say, Bhaiya, jo business or jo profession mein hum hai, usme bhi hum consciously kisi ko to nahi I mean, I know there will be a lot of questions ki haan, yahan pe bullock cart use hua ki wahan pe kya hua. There are a lot of things. You cannot change everything in one day. It's like having a cake, having one slice at a time. So, but at least if you see the bigger picture, so these are my two biggest rewards that, of course, there are many things. I have a beautiful family to support me in terms of, you know, all my journey and believing in me and how they have also become voice for animals now. I have some great friends who believe in me and they are all kind of transitioning and giving their bit to, you know, they totally believe in, you know, how my movement has been, how my journey has been. And they've seen me health-wise, uh, you know, mind-wise, the transition, the, you know, good transition. So, obviously, people are motivated. I do see a lot of people, you know, getting motivated and changing their uh, lifestyle or at least trying the practice of reduce, replace and repeat. Yeah. Thank you so much, Madhuja, for taking time out today. I would like to ask if anybody has any question. Abhishek, uh, do you have any question for our, our speaker today? If you want, you can unmute yourself and ask directly. Yeah, I have a question. Hmm. So lots of people nowadays are saying like, uh, basically the health thing. Huh? Suppose if people are uh, facing some some kind of I have seen one or two cases in back in like my friend in Delhi. So he was facing some mental thing like mental trauma or something uh, like changing the food habit. Like uh, he he was in like a non-veg family. So uh, his uh, diet preference is non-veg. But since last couple of months, like uh, one month or two months, he is transitioning, try to uh, change into uh, plant-based. Okay. So, but uh, he has facing some mental like stress or some kind of thing, like he's forgetting something. Like, does it like, uh, like for the, like he told me like, just because of I changed the into uh, plant-based, this is the reason I, I do this thing. Like, what should be my answer, reply on this? Like, is he trying to say that he's forgetting things in one and two months of his transition? Yes, 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 yes. What, okay. Two months or three months, yeah. Uh, Abhishek, thank you so much for the question. Uh, and uh, see, obviously, I'm not a doctor. I cannot give a, a medical advice. But I can definitely tell you because... Uh, you know, I too come from a very, very, uh, uh, like, we are a very predominantly a meat eating family. I come from a Bengali family, married to a Punjabi family. So one side it is full fish wala uh, peer pressure, one side it's dairy peer pressure. <laughs> but even if he's saying ki wo kuch bhool rahe hai, and he's trying to link it with a B12 deficiency because Bhulneka, you know, when you forget, it is always with a B12 deficiency. Let me tell you, B12 deficiency does not start arising in one and two months. B12, if, if you have adequate B12 in your body, it is restored for a few years. Only after certain years, once it is wear, worn out, it will start showing some symptoms. So... One is, I think he is a little stressed out. What happens, you know, when you are the only one in the family and you your food uh, is dependent on the person who is making the decision 
about the family's meal, then it becomes difficult for that particular person who's transitioning or who has already transitioned into vegan to kind of be very happy with what it is provided to him or her unless a separate meal has been curated because what happens is most of the time uh, that person is asked to manage ki ghar mein jo dal aur sabzi bana hai aapko uske sath manage karna padega mm-hmm. baki sab ke liye to meat anda ye sab bani raha hai paneer vagaira right uh, so it is very important that you know while we are transitioning because as i said in one of the questions that namrata asked in veganism food plays a major role because it is three times almost we are consuming it now three times being dependent on somebody who doesn't believe in your transition your thought process and don't know why even you are making that effort for changing your food habit then it is important that you also learn a little bit and give your bit you start making that simple tofu scramble for yourself you know add that to the food so because after all you know we all have somehow our happiness linked to the food and now when everybody is sitting on the table around you everybody is eating say three kind of things and you are having to compromise with just one with a roti obviously you will feel depressed we do we all feel depressed and it is a very normal human phenomena i mean um, if my mother said that just cook one dal and a roti for me and she cooked a egg curry and a paneer and a dal for the rest of the family i will feel very left alone it will start making me feel that what am i doing wrong where am i going wrong why am i being neglected and abandoned like this why my food choices are not being taken care of is it not important why are they not understanding that uh, you know this is so important so you need to one tell him that you also need to take a little bit of interest in the food that you know you are eating start adding something from your own side or maybe just get a get something there are so many things that are available nowadays in market if he is living in he, he where is he living in delhi Delhi, Delhi में तो बहुत कुछ अवेलेबल है देर आर सो मेनी हीट एंड हीट अवेलेबिलिटीज तो ले आओ अपने लिए आई मीन इवन एज अ नॉन वीगन ही मस्ट बी बाइंग थिंग्स फ्रॉम आउटसाइड ही कैन बाई एज अगन ऑल्सो ही कैन जस्ट हैव दैट एज यू नो साइड पार्ट तो ऑब्वियसली हिज होल फैमिली विल ऑल्सो गेट इंडिया अरे भाई तुम क्या नया खा रहे हो हम हमारे साथ भी शेयर करो यू नो देन यू स्टार्ट दैट फर्स्ट फर्स्ट आइस ब्रेकिंग थिंग एज अ वीगन कि आप खा के देखो कितना अच्छा लग रहा है उनको भी शायद अच्छा लगे सो दैट्स वन सेकेंड इज इफ इज फॉर गेटिंग देन ही मस्ट गेट हिज बी ट्वेल्व चेक बिकॉज दैट्स वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट एंड इफ ही इज लो इन बी ट्वेल्व देर इज नो हार्म ट्रस्ट मी बिकॉज एंड देर इज बिग हार्म बट इट्स नॉट बिकॉज फॉर इज वन मंथ ऑफ ट्रांजिशन बिकॉज पीपल हु आर ईटिंग मीट ऑल देयर लाइफ इवन दे आर हैविंग बी ट्वेल्व डेफिशियंसी and most of the b12 supplements on this planet are being sold to all non vegans because vegans are very careful about b12 they are already checking their b12 they are already supplementing or already eating b12 uh, rich food and all of that so he must check his b12 but to me i don't think it is his b12 i have a feeling it's more of his excitement and you know his uh, his yes. his new journey ka ye jo experience uske sath ho raha hai जो फैमिली में उसको शायद प्रॉपरली इसके लिए ज्यादा एनकरेजमेंट नहीं मिल रहा होगा ऑल दैट इज बिल्डिंग ऑन दैट कुड बी अ पॉसिबिलिटी ही नीड्स अ कम्युनिटी टू गो टू ही नीड्स मोर ऑफ यू नो रिक्वेस्ट हिम टू जॉइन आवर पोटलक्स विद बंदू इन दिल्ली में ये आई वुड आस्क हिम के यू नो रिकमेंड हिम टू जॉइन आवर ग्रुप एंड ही कैन गेट अ सपोर्ट विद द कम्युनिटी ही कैन आल्सो टेक हिज फैमिली देयर दे कैन मीट एंड यू नो डिस्कस विद अदर पीपल एंड यू नो common myths which are existing in their mind will get addressed so yeah absolutely is a support available i was just there. coming to that aap usko bolo ki he needs to be a part of a community and ubuntu is everywhere i mean and their community is growing so yes be a part of the community he can not only meet people but he will find all sorts of vegan food gulab jamun to yes. <laughs> gulab jamun to mock meat sab mil jayega <laughs> okay okay thank you okay
Thank Any you. other question you have, Abhishek? And one more question, huh? Uh, like, uh, मतलब जो होता है ना मतलब B12 को fermented food, ठीक है? तो उसको लेकर जैसे people are saying like जो gut bacteria, तो few people like have the gut back gut issue or something like that. तो उसमें कैसे मतलब vegan दही अभी घर में बनाने जाए? तो I have shared some recipes also with my few friends. बेंगोली They are like few are from Bangalore, few are from like in Kolkata also, like here. Yeah. Okay, so see for Bengalis, so I have a very uh, quick answer. Ask them uh, to go and have panta bhat too. Uh, I and mean, panta bhat is super. So and anyways, it's summer season. It's the mm. best for your body. <laughs> Ferment the rice, have it next day. It it has got very good amount of uh, good bacteria. Yes. That's one. Two, dahi banana mushkil hai. मुझे भी लगता है मुश्किल है मैं तो पहले भी कभी दही नहीं बनाती थी अभी भी नहीं बनाती ऑनेस्टली मैं तो वीगन दही खरीद के ही खाती हूँ दट्स लकीली बिकॉज कैलकटा में वी हैव गुड सप्लाई ऑफ दही बट आउटसाइड कैलकटा वी डू नॉट हैव सो फार आई एम टॉकिंग अबाउट रेस्ट ऑफ बेंगाल बट देर आर लॉट ऑफ एंशंट आई वे एंशियंट बट ट्रेडिशनल इंडियन फॉर्मेंटेड फूड एंड दे आर वेरी इजी टू मेक Like kanji, you know, kanji. you know what kanji is. Just do Google. I will mm-hmm. still tell you. It's with root vegetables. Okay, you basically put a lot of water, and there are certain amount of this black salt and mustard that you put, and it is led to ferment. Okay, achar ki tarah hota hai, but that is more with water. Lot of water, L- little bit of vegetables. So that whole water and the vegetable, they are all fermented. Consume them; they are very, very good for uh, you know summer, and uh, they are they are gut friendly. So there are a lot of things which are uh, very typically our traditional uh, you know menu, and you can make them easily. Uh, I also read uh, you know sesame, til, mm-hmm. til bata. Til bata mm. is also very good. So sesame paste. To make sesame paste, have uh, just like that, or have with hot rice, or make uh, pakoras or sesame. Mm. Eat sesame in various forms. Yes. It is yes. very good for gut health. So there yes. are a lot of things. I mean, you particularly don't need to have dahi. I don't remember having dahi as a kid on a regular basis. But uh, and we as a family did not have too much of meat. Also, we were not a very heavily meat eating family because I grew up in a very traditional Bengali family. My grandmother used to be the uh, like the caretaker of the whole kitchen and the meals. It was more of a fish, but uh, the he was never a part of our typically. You know, coastal. We are a very coastal yeah. people, no Bengalis, and we don't have dahi much. It is more of a very North Indian uh, food. Yeah. But still, we all had good B12, unless until we grew up and started eating all processed food and uh, yes. really did haywire with our gut. <laughs> so I think balanced food is good enough. And B12 maintenance के लिए it's not only food. There are a lot of things. Like check on your toothpaste, what you're using. Check on your, uh, I mean, morning mouth uh, health care, mouth care. You know, it's very important. Like have a glass of water after you wake up from sleep. So there are bacteria that grows in your mouth that goes back into your gut. It is good for it. Do not just straight away brush. Have a glass of water and after a while brush it. So there are a lot of things. Not only just red meat is important. Trust me. Uh, if you want to read about B12, again there are a lot of good articles available. Read about B12. 
there are a whole lot of things to do to kind of maintain a good gut by maintaining good B12 in your body. Okay, thank you. Thank you so Most much, Patricia, for taking time out today.